Former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta calling out the White House over its failure to secure a 2011 deal that would have allowed us to leave our forces with a status of forces agreement in place to secure the situation on the ground in Iraq. In a new memoir, Panetta says that White House officials blocked that deal from happening. But the State Department pushing back in an interview with Bill last hour. Watch this. The Iraqi government, it would not have mattered. They did not want to have troops in Iraq. They weren't willing to take the steps needed. It wasn't going to get through the parliament. Uh, it was clear at the time that the politics uh, just were not aligned with making this happen. Is that true? Retired four-star General Jack Keane is the chairman of the Institute for Study of War and a Fox News military analyst. Uh, General, good morning. Good to have you here. Good morning, Martha. So that is the question I have for you. Is what Jen Psaki said on our air true? No, it's not. It's actually a false narrative that the White House has been using for some time. So much so, I think they believe it. Uh, f frankly, uh, what truly happened here is General Alston, who was the on-scene four-star commander in Iraq, had recommended to the president a force of 24,000. The president rejected that number as he rejected the surge forces in Afghanistan that McChrystal and Petraeus had recommended. The envoy for the president put on the table for the negotiations a force of 10,000. Maliki knew that that was not a serious proposal in terms of what was actually required. Therefore, what he did to, get, to cover himself politically with his parliament, with the members of his government, he threw waving immunity on the table. Maliki knew full well there's not a single country in the world that the United States has an agreement where troops are present without an immunity agreement. So he knew that was a deal breaker. He threw it on a table to get political cover. We never gave Maliki the negotiations that he wanted, which was to get the number up over 10,000. And that deal broke, it, broke down. It's fascinating. So, so you're saying, you, the White House is saying it went back and forth, and that, then it went back. And that at that moment, they said, well, see, Maliki doesn't want us here. So goodbye, we're leaving. But you're saying that the reason that he put that status of forces agreement on the table is because he believed that no American president would ever make a deal that wouldn't allow for that. So he knew that that was Maliki's leverage to get more American boots on the ground, not less, correct? Yeah, right. He, he wanted... He, he, the 10,000 was inadequate. He knew half of that would be to protect itself, and he's not left with the kind of capabilities that he truly needs. And so that, that he was very, very well versed on what the requirements was. Listen, I'm not a Maliki fan. He's a nefarious character. But the fact of the matter is, we didn't do right here. Secretary Panetta knows it. Secretary Gates knows it. Everybody who is close to this knows it. Just a quote from Leon Panetta in this book. He says, to my frustration, the White House coordinated the negotiations that you and I are just discussing, but never really led them. Officials there seem content to endorse an agreement if state and defense could reach one, but without the president's active advocacy, Al Maliki was allowed to slip away. Your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely true. From January 2009, when the administration took over and Christopher Hill as an ambassador in Iraq became our envoy after Ryan Crocker, the most esteemed Middle East envoy we've ever had, he had a different relationship, Maliki that is, with this government. Normal interface with President Bush on a regular basis, very engaged interface with the ambassador, helping to shape the future of Iraq was really the issue. Security was being, a, was being acquired, but now the political process, it was hands off Iraq. No, no, none of the negotiations that were needed to move the political process forward were taking place. The fact of the matter is, Maliki goes into the negotiations frustrated already by this relationship that he has with this new administration, who he comes to the conclusion doesn't want any part of Iraq. And mm -hmm. I think it was an accurate assumption yeah. on his part. So, so the scenario that you're laying out, and you've laid it out before, but I think it becomes even more present uh, given these new quotes from Leon Panetta, is that in both of these cases, in Iraq and Afghanistan, the military was saying, if you want to succeed in your goal, Mr. President Obama, of having you know, a stable situation on the ground that allows the United States to back out of this situation, you need to have a certain number of forces on the ground to, to protect the, the peace that we have built there. If you don't leave that many, you're going to have a huge problem on your hands. So we didn't leave that many, and now we have a huge problem on our hands, correct? Oh, that is absolutely true. I mean, the forces on the ground, it was abs what, what we needed we needed to have some air power that we are using today. We needed to have intelligence that we're using today. And we also needed, which we're not using, we needed to leave our, our JSOC Tier 1 Special Operation Forces there to pounce on the Al-Qaeda if they rose their head again as ISIS, which they are now. That would have taken place. None of that took place.
General Jack Keane, as always, thank you so much, sir.